people have been put off. I don't think they've been put off by... I mean, we've had too much of the Sunak and Liz contest, I agree. But I think, in principle, they actually liked hearing people talk about policies. It could have been a lot shorter, I've yeah, said that already. Yeah, a lot shorter. But they, they wanted to hear people. They're happy to hear people talk about policies. But we've got to get off our bottoms and stop thinking that politics can carry on being a spectator sport. And it's something we all need to get much more involved in at different levels and feel a sense of responsibility for it. And we've got to do things to encourage that. And all this aggressive personal attacks at the moment, that I think really turns I, I absolutely off. agree with you. And I think the thing is that at the moment, bringing up the past is not helpful for where we go because we've got such big issues facing us coming towards the winter for in strikes, you know, possibly people have been talking about a general strike. You've got Goldman Sachs talking about inflation possibly hitting 20% next year. We've got to talk about solutions. We've got to talk about coming together and having a different sort of debate. So I think when you look at, and for me, the most important thing in all of this, and as I said, I brought up this uh, opinion today, is you have to think about the consequences of making things so black and white when they're not because you, there is nuance in everything, and we have to get it right, or else what happens is you overpromise to people, people then get angry, and there's this sort of division and polarising in politics, which is what's happening. And I really don't think that's helpful, because we are where we are. We can't go back and rewrite the past. What we've got to do is find a way to resolve the issues we're facing today and tomorrow. So for me personally, when I talk about people uh, not accepting things and trying to change things and all the rest of it, it's not necessarily the past for me. It's about a sentiment, a political sentiment. So I know, and I, I speak with great conviction here because I'm one of them, um, and I know so many people that are like me, and I know some of them will be watching this tonight, that are so disengaged with politics. And what I want, Gina, and I know you've set up a new party as well, so you, we all probably want the same thing. I want as many people in this country to, to be as engaged. And quite okay. frankly, I couldn't care less who you vote for. I want as many people to sit there, look at politics and think, actually, I want to be part of this. There's OK, I will tell you that. Me. Going around the country, we've done a huge amount of tours and people are disengaged and they are upset. And the thing is, the most common sentiment you hear on the doorstep is, and I mean across the country, is them and us. We don't trust them. They don't care about us. There's no decency in politics. They don't believe in Westminster. There is, there is a poison that they believe is there, and that's putting people off more than anything. And right now, they have the sense that nobody cares about them and that people in Westminster are in a different bubble, as they call it. And that is a massive feeling, and it's even worse than it was at the expenses, you know, when it was the expenses scandal. Because this isn't about one political party or another. This is actually about politics, is what we are finding. This is there's this sentiment that we don't have good politicians who represent people. And as I said, that's not about one party or the other. It is about politics per se, which is why I think we have to find a way about talking and to each other, which is why, you know, I'll come on and I'll, I get a lot of abuse for coming on your program for coming on different things. And I agree that there are people who are still stuck in, in, a, in a silo, and that's not helpful for us moving forwards because we've got to talk to each other.